A warm welcome to your Barbados Disability Evening News Update. So glad you could join us. Chairman of the Electoral and Boundaries Commission, Leslie Haynes QC, maintains that the exclusion of voters infected with COVID-19 from participating in the upcoming general election is on good legal ground. On Friday, there were 4,700 people in isolation, and it's likely that number could arise ahead of the January 19 poll. The prominent Queen's Council tells Barbados today it's the democratic right of each citizen to mount a challenge if they believe their rights are being infringed. If they want to bring a case, they, they bring a case. The, the, you know, democracy, the, the lovely thing about the democracy is that we are, are encouraged to, we are encouraged to, to rebel or to challenge it at all times. Uh, the lovely thing about democracy is after the challenge, because of the doctrine of separation of powers, it reverts quickly. Barbadians can expect major tax ease under a Democratic Labour Party administration. That's the plan outlined in the party's 40-page manifesto released last night. Party President Verla de Pisa says government announced plans to reduce income tax on pensions from 25% to 12.5%. Majority of our pensioners, having given their time and service to the country, on receiving their pension and gratuity, usually invest it. And one of the major investments was government paper. And for the first time in the history of the country, and I dare say the world, government paper, a government devalued its own paper. That may have helped them with the bottom line and the balance sheet, but it didn't help you, pensioners, as you prepare for your sunset years. And because you took a significant hit, because you took a significant hit, it is intended to put something back in your pockets. The DLP is also touting plans to slash the burdensome garbage and sewage contribution levy by 50% and reduce the excise tax on fuel at the pumps by up to 25 cents per litre. It will also remove the asset tax on financial institutions. An incoming DLP administration will phase out the asset, asset tax. It was asset in truth, wasn't it? Will phase out the asset tax on financial institutions but introduce robust regulation on banking fees because it cannot be that we give them an ease and they don't give you one too. So there will be monitoring to ensure that the consumer is protected. So we will have to work with the banks on this provision. But I know that they're going to be happy not to have to pay the asset tax, all right? And we will use legislative provisions. It wouldn't be by agreement only, but legislative provisions to ensure that we can manage this process and manage it well. But in immediate reaction today, the ruling Barbados Labour Party warned the DLP's pledges were inappropriate and could cost the country $800 million if implemented. Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Ryan Strawn, warned there could be serious consequences. The idea of the reduction of the garbage and sewage charge, given that whilst we have been able to take the garbage off the street, sorry, the sewage, sorry, off the streets of Barbados, there still remains a long-term solution to be financed, which affects all Barbadians. With respect to the collection of garbage, we have all determined that we must share in this burden. And the extent to which the operations of the Sanitation Service Authority, the actual maintenance of the trucks and the servicing, we have determined that within the context of the budget, that the garbage and sewage contribution will be dedicated specifically to ensuring that we can maintain those services for all Barbadians, such that persons no longer have to feel um, any measure of distress with respect to those matters. And what is being proposed effectively would mean that there's $41 million less to provide those services on an annual basis. So the question to the Democratic Labour Party is where will this $41 million come from in order to provide these critical services 
to Barbadians. With respect to the reduction in the excise tax um, in terms of fuel at the pump, this is anticipated to cost $31 million. And therefore, given where the economy is at the moment, again, the question is where will this money come to help provide the range of services that government continues to provide, even in the middle of a pandemic, to ordinary Barbadians? Prime Minister Mia Motley rubbished the idea that the country's debt was out of control. We only chose to raise $500 million in debt. That $500 million brings our debt, as you can see from the document I signed earlier this week, that as of the 30th of September 2021, our debt stood at $13 billion and 86. As of the end of December, it was just on or about $13.1 billion. We are $3.5 billion less in debt than we were when we took over the government. $3.5 billion less. Against that backdrop, we have seen a steady reduction in our debt. Our problem with the debt to GDP anchor is that our GDP contracted in 2020. And we expect that this year and next year, we can achieve double digit growth to begin to bring our GDP back to where it was. But our absolute debt is $3.5 billion less. Against that backdrop, we believe that we have an argument to make with the fund that a 6% surplus was relevant before COVID, but not after COVID. And what does this really mean in layman's terms? Am I going to lose weight at six pounds per year, six pounds per month, or will I lose weight at four pounds per month, or will I lose weight at two pounds per month, or will I lose weight at one pound per month, or will I put on weight? Bottom line is, we need to lose the weight. But we have to get back growth first, and once we do that, we can go on a steady path between now and 2035, and if necessary, longer, in order to be able to bring back down the debt because what this government will not do is to sacrifice people in aid of arbitrary numbers. In today's COVID-19 update, the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 537 new cases, 229 males and 308 females, from the 2,346 tests conducted on Thursday. Of the new positives, 86 persons were under the age of 18 and 451 were 18 years and older. There were 107 people in isolation facilities, while 4,593 were in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news in Jamaica, an urgent cry for the government to address spiraling crime in the parish of St. James. We get more in this report from Sandy Williams of Television Jamaica. Come like a, the flu, once one division catch it, all the division catch it. Counselor for the Granville Division in St. James, Michael Troop, giving an analogy of the crime situation in the country. Just 14 days into 2022, and already Jamaica has recorded more than 50 murders, 10 of them in St. James. Chairman of the St. James Municipal Corporation, Leroy Williams, says that this is a cause for concern. What can be done to curtail the murderous trend we are seeing in our parish, in our city? Our security forces, in spite 
of the intelligence gathering and hard work they have been putting in still have a tremendous battle on their hands. Councillor Troop believes a different approach is needed to address crime in the parish. I think as the person in charge of the parish, you need to call a forum as quick as possible with all the stakeholders in St. James, the Chamber of Commerce, the councillors, the police, everybody, let us sit down for a day, drink some coffee and corporate strategy, or we are going to keep the crime in St. James at a state, a manageable state. On the international scene, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is fighting for his political future as outrage mounted after his belated apology for attending a party during lockdown and as a fresh report emerged of other gatherings at his office. It is the latest in a series of revelations of what the government in the past has called gatherings, what the Prime Minister called on Wednesday in the House of Commons a work event. Uh, and these are clearly parties. So on the 16th of April 2021, not quite a, a year ago, when Downing Street staff uh, were, like the rest of the country, supposed to be, yes, working, but we were in a period of national mourning, they are being accused of holding two leaving parties with alcohol, music, indeed, according to these revelations, uh, latest revelations, one of the aides uh, went out with a suitcase uh, to a local supermarket to bring back a full suitcase of bottles of alcohol. Uh, this may appear to be funny for some people, but it is not, because it is all about the rising anger where people made sacrifices. Uh, and at the time, you could not meet uh, people indoors uh, that were not uh, from your household. And here we have 30 or 40 people or more, uh, you know, partying away. And the timing of it is quite shocking, because the very next morning, the Queen uh, was at the funeral, respecting the COVID then rules of 30 people in uh, the chapel uh, for saying goodbye uh, to her husband, her beloved husband, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. So this is just uh, a really shocking, shocking revelation in a series of allegations. And of course, there is an inquiry, an internal one going on about these to try and get to some of the facts and what will be some of the consequences and sanctions. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.